The CCP-10C was supposed to be CZ's Glock killer, and in the year 2023, the price dropped by quite a bit, getting as cheap as sub $400. So how does it stand up in a crowded field in 2023? Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David, and this is the CZP-10C. Now, for those of you who are new to the channel, I like to look at handguns through the context of performance shooting and how the guns actually perform. Now, the P-10C is for sure a good shooter. It is a compact full size and is meant to compete head to head with like the Glock 19 to the point where it will actually fit in some Glock holsters. This is a Glock holster, and you can see right there, if I He-Man it hard enough, it fits in there and it is actually usable. I'll take a moment to thank today's video sponsor. It is Danforth Designs. I'll tell you more about it in a bit, but this is a pretty crowded field as it sits right now, which might be why they lowered the price. Now in the box, it's gonna come two 15 round flush fit magazines. It has what I like to call a mullet grip because the grip extends down just a little bit further so that the base pad goes flush at the bottom of the grip. It gives you a little bit more surface area so it feels more like a full size grip in the hand while still being very, very trim. One thing that's pretty rare at this price point is it comes with co-witness irons. Now this is the optic ready version of this pistol and it comes with good iron sights that would probably co-witness with like RMR thickness sights or hollow sun 507 type sights. And not only that, these are actually night sights, although they're some of the dimmest lamps that I've encountered, which is fine because I like them to behave more like blacked out rears and that's what they do. One thing to be aware of is that CZ does its optics plates a la carte. If you want the genuine article optic plate for your gun, you might be waiting a while because CZ US say is basically perpetually out of stock. Now the aftermarket does have options available to you and you can honestly order the part directly from Europe as well. Now also in the box comes a couple different back straps, but the back strap stops about right there. So if you use the bigger back straps, it actually changes the grip angle on how the pistol behaves a little bit. Other than that, the controls are ambi with the mag catch being something that you can swap to the other side, but you've got a slide stop on the left-handed side of the pistol. Ergonomically, the frame feels amazing. It's not block-like at all. The sculpt on the polymer just sits right down into your hand. Married with the awesome texture, it's kind of this like knobby rigid texture that is on the front and the back straps that really bite the gun into your hand and doesn't allow it to move. Now on the sides of the gun, they stopped the texture right before the critical part, which is where the heel of your palm makes contact with the frame and helps really control recoil. So if you wanna add skate tape or something like that right there, silicon carbide or whatever, it'd probably be a good idea. Trigger is a hinged trigger, but it has kind of a flattish profile. When you pull the trigger, it kind of goes flush, just like you see there. And it is a shape that gives you an excellent reach and a very good control of the trigger, so it's very easy to pull through. Now, my example has about a four and a half pound break when you pull at about the bottom, you know, 25% of the trigger shoe. And depending on where you pull it from, it varies pull weight. So it's about a four and a half to five pound trigger, which is right where you want the striker fired guns to be. As far as the character of the trigger pull, when you pull the trigger, you get a firm wall and it looks really, really firm. It feels really, really firm when you're shooting, but if you pull really slowly, you can see kind of the creep. See that wiggle right there? And then there's a little bit of over travel and you're gone. Very shootable trigger, very good to go. So the shooting performance of the CZ P10 is nuts, but before we get there, let me tell you about today's video sponsor, which is Danforth Design with their holstering safety. Part of the reason striker guns are loved is because they have a simple operation. You just grip it and rip it basically. But the problem is when you go to holster the gun, there is no external safety beyond just this little trigger safety, which realistically is just a drop safety. You have to get a really good holster, like this is the Harry's Holsters Infiltrator for the CZ P10C. It covers the trigger guard and all that kind of stuff, which is nice. But if you find yourself holstering like in the dark or seated in the car, which is a reality everyday carry guys tend to face, you have no way to stop a wayward garment from pulling the trigger straight to the rear. And most accidents tend to happen when you are holstering the firearm. It's not a problem for the hammer fired guns because they have manual safeties or a double action hammer, which you can hammer check. The holstering safety or striker control device replaces the back plate on the slide. So when you pull the trigger to the rear, you can see the little back plate pops out, which means if I put my thumb on the back plate and pull the trigger as hard as I can, I cannot release the striker. But if my thumb's not there, it goes. Cool thing about this is you don't even have to think about it. It's not even there when you're shooting. So deployment of the gun is exactly the same. This style of safety has been around for a while on Glocks. It was called the striker control device. I have one on my Glock 19 that I used to everyday carry, and it is a fantastic tool. I recommend them very highly. In my opinion, every pistol that is striker fired should have something like this out of the box. Since they don't, Danforth this design stood in the gap for the P10 and they have the holstering safety, which you can check out. The only thing that keeps your trigger from moving to the rear 
when you're holstering is vigilance and sometimes life gets in the way. So thank you to Danforth Designs for sponsoring the video. Let's talk about this gun some more. Now, a lot of Glock competitors, one thing they do when they copy the Glock design is they have pre-cocked strikers. The P10 doesn't have a pre-cock striker. When you pull the gun to the wall, you're actually finishing the cocking of the striker so that when you release it, it breaks. So it's almost like a double action gun and the trigger goes dead upon releasing the striker. It's a really good action and it's great because it removes the probability of an internal failure of like a firing pin block or something like that, allowing the gun to fire in the holster or anything crazy like that. Now, performance wise, this gun benefits from basically all the same stuff that Glocks have, which is a low bore axis striker fire design, but it also has the enhanced ergonomics of a CZ and better grip texture that allows it to plant in your hand and stay put. The gun is incredibly stable, both in slow fire and at speed. The very low bore axis married with the good geometry and traction makes the full house defensive loads feel very manageable. Now with a low bore axis gun like this gun, it is going to dump a lot of energy into your arms. You're still going to need good technique to control the gun, but if you do your part, the gun comes back to zero like you would want it to. It is a very, very good design. One thing that I can ding it for, I actually hurt my thumb in the process of recording this video, is that the forward serrations, while they feel really bitey when you kind of grab them right there, I've got a hurt thumb right now, they're not big enough. Like the very small serrations right there make the forward manipulations a little bit challenging. Bigger, broader texture that kind of allows more flesh, especially on calloused hands, into the slide would be good. The rear serrations are more usable for cocking, but that's not my preferred way to cock a pistol. The gun just feels really well made. It doesn't feel blocky at all. It just allows your hand around it. And like I say, I do miss the extra bit of traction, which is really nice to have on a low bore axis gun. In filming for this video, I only put just shy of about 500 rounds to this pistol. So I didn't run the round count up a lot, but I have a lot of people who I trust who have been carrying the P10Cs for years, running the round counts up into the thousands. The nice thing about these older designed guns is that, you know, the data is out there. These things are super reliable. And because the gun has been out for a while, the aftermarket has caught up. The magazines are inexpensive at about 30 bucks or less. There are tons of holster options. Like I say, the Harry's Holster Infiltrator is one of my favorite picks when it's available for guns. I like to use those, but there are literally a ton of other holster options out there that you can check out and you can maybe make Glock holsters work. And now with, you know, other doodads like the holstering safety in place, you know, the ecosystem is pretty mature at this point. Ultimately, this gun is not a $400 gun. This would be appropriate at $500 plus. It's that good. However, for whatever reason, CZ is still selling these things for less than $400 at the end of 2023. It is a very rich time to be alive in the world of handgun shooters because there are so many good options and they're starting to get downright affordable. If you've got experience with the gun, please sound off in the comments. Let other people benefit from your experience. As always, I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one.